Welcome to Jordan. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline, and this is the first episode in my Jordanian series. After an exhausting half term of teaching, I've made it to Jordan for a two week exploration around the country. Yesterday we arrived at just gone midnight, stayed in a lovely family run guest house in Madaba, where we enjoyed a delicious traditional Jordanian breakfast and visited the St. George's Greek Orthodox Church, which houses a 6th century mosaic floor depicting an impressive map of the Middle East. The afternoon was then spent hiking, or was it wild swimming along the Wadi Majib Sikh Trail? And this brings us nicely to today, a day spent relaxing at the Moven Picks Dead Sea Resort Hotel. Morning and welcome to the Dead Sea here in Jordan. One of the things about this area is that most of the accommodation seem to be these really big resort hotels and it's just not the kind of place that I would normally choose to stay in when I go away. In part, I'm usually put off by the price and that's probably been the biggest factor as to why I tend to steer clear of these sorts of places. But before coming out to Jordan, we found an amazing deal on the internet that gave us not only a couple of nights here at the Moven Pick Resort Hotel, which says that it's a five star. On first impressions, I'm not too sure if I would say that it was a five star, but then again, I've never stayed in a five star hotel to have anything to compare it to. But it's also giving us half boards, we get our breakfasts, our evening meals, we get access to the spa, the resort has its own little stretch of beach that is actually on the Dead Sea, so we get to go and float in that without struggling to get access to the water. And it's also got loads of swimming pools and other things that the hotel's got to offer that I guess just staying in guest houses or backpackers hostels or using Airbnb, I don't usually have access to any of this sort of stuff. So as well as being able to share my experience of floating in the Dead Sea and We'll get to see how that goes a little bit later on today. I also just want to share what a day in the life of being in one of these resort hotels is like because I think you guys are probably going to discover it at the same time as me. The terrace where we are at the moment is where we've come to have breakfast this morning and just inside is also indoor seating as well as all of the different buffet areas. The selection on offer in this hotel is just unbelievable. You've got one section that's full of vegetables, like more salady sorts of vegetables. There's one that's got fish and cheeses and a little bit of meat as well. You've got the hot section. It's got your staples such as the falafels because it seems like they do falafel here for breakfast rather than it being a lunch or a dinner, which is how I would normally have it back at home. But they've also got the things like the potatoes, the baked beans. They've even got things like chicken sausages because obviously with it being a predominant Muslim country they don't have any pork they've got omelette stations but they've also got that omelette station things like scrambled egg hard-boiled eggs they've got a station that's full of breads and pastries a fruit one there's another one that's full of like cereals and dried fruits to have with the cereals a pancake making station where they'll also make some waffles as well as pancakes there's just been a plethora of different choices and then there's a little bit of table service where obviously they're taking away our finished plates and they're also coming around and topping up with coffee as much as we want. It's really quite nice in that it's all screened in so you don't have any issues with things like flies and mosquitoes coming in here and then you've got the fans above just keeping us nice and cool with all of the green trees and you can just hear like the tweeting of the birds I suppose they are attracted into this area because of the fresh running water and a little bit more greenery than the arid desert that's right outside of the hotel. It's been a lovely lazy start to the day and I'm hoping that the laziness today is going to continue. We've wandered down to the Dead Sea and we've got a couple of sun lounges on the private beach that the hotel owns. As we entered into the pool section they even gave us these yellow towels so that was a little bit unexpected because I ended up packing my own beach towel. It's quite nice having one less thing that gets dirty along the way and then we're traipsing a dirty towel everywhere with us so I was quite happy to take them up on the offer of these. Everyone I think has done exactly the same because there just seems to be yellow towels everywhere. One of the interesting things about the Dead Sea is that it's just over 
400 meters below sea level. The water that's inside of the sea, although technically speaking it is actually a lake, doesn't have any kind of outlet. Over the last few decades the water levels on the Dead Sea have been dropping quite significantly because the summer heat is causing far more water to evaporate than what's making it into the sea and that's because of the irrigation that's needed for the farmers fields and also there's a huge pot ash industry to the south of the Dead Sea and that's also taking up a lot of the water. When I was researching where might be the best place to stay, one of the things that kept on coming up is that access to the Dead Sea can be very difficult if you're not staying in one of the resorts, and that is due to the receding water levels. There are a couple of private beaches where you can pay a fee to access them on a daily basis, but by the time I was pricing everything up, such as our meals, our accommodation, the beach access, it just worked out cheaper to come and stay in one of these resorts. So they've provided us with these pots that we can just get our hands into and it pulls out all of this mud and the idea is is that it's got all of these great minerals I was going to say chemicals chemicals doesn't sound right minerals inside of it that's great for the skin so you're supposed to come down get some of this mud all over your hands and start smearing it on your face but it feels really thick <laughs> And then you're supposed to leave it for about five to 10 minutes in the sun and it then starts to dry out and it makes your skin go quite tight. And I don't really understand all of this sort of stuff. I'm not a girly girl. I'm not someone who normally goes to things like spas and is like, oh yes, give me a mud wrap. But given that it's like the thing to do here and it's free, it's not cost us anything extra. I figure I'll give it a go. So I don't really understand any of the science behind this stuff, but I guess I'm just going to be much better looking come dinner time tonight after uh, after applying all of this mud and going for a dip in the Dead Sea because apparently that's also supposed to be full of lots and lots of great minerals that are good for the skin. So how's how's my face looking? Good coverage? Have I missed anything? Just your eyes. Just my yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm not. Good. <laughs> okay and then the idea is, is that you're supposed to also be putting it on your arms and on your legs i'm not too sure where this has come from have they just dredged it out of the uh the sea they call it the dead sea it's technically speaking a lake it's not a sea and uh it's had many a name so over the time they've called it the salt sea, which I think is very apt because obviously it's very, very salty. But they've also called it, I think something like the stinky sea. And they said that apparently it really stinks. And when you put on this mud, you can really smell it. And that's why, but to be honest, I can't smell this at all. I was kind of bracing myself, putting it next to my face, but it's been absolutely fine. This is nuts. The salt content in here is so high, you can really feel it. And my hands almost feel like they're really oily, but I'm pretty sure it's because of the salt content in the water. And even yesterday when we did that hike through the Wadi Mujib Sikh trail. So real quick about this trail that you've not seen. On our first full day, we undertook an amazing hike up a Sikh that turned into something of a wild swim. I have a few photos, but sadly my video footage from this activity and a few other tidbits taken on the GoPro were wiped, but hopefully these photos give you a feel for it. And we were given the life vests and I was floating back down the canyon stream. I could feel my upper body floating because of the life vest that I was wearing, but my feet kept on sinking back down and just my entire body is completely floating. It's really relaxing. I think that I'm gonna be spending at least like the next half an hour or so just floating around in here. We've come back out of the Dead Sea and I have to say, if I go in a normal sea or a normal ocean, I really don't like the feeling that you have where all of the sea salt gets stuck to you. And this was just 
times a thousand or at least it felt that way so I was really grateful that here at the resort they've got showers which is fresh water showers so we could just scrub off any of that excess sea salt that was still stuck to our bodies before we just sat back down on the sun lounges to naturally dry off the salt content. I mean obviously I know and I think everyone knows that the Dead Sea is famous for how salty it is and it's what makes you float. Looking at all of the boulders that were along the side of the shore they were just caked in salt crystals to the point where actually there were a few pieces of salt that I thought were rock but it's just pure salt you could push your fingers through them and it's completely break apart. We've now spent a bit of time at the beach we're gonna head up to one of the seven or so pools that this hotel has got to offer just to see what else in the way of relaxation and water-based activities they've got here. We spent the afternoon at the spa and once again the footage from this was wiped bar a couple of photos and a nice time lapse of the sunset at the infinity pool but it was a relaxing afternoon. We've been back to the hotel room, freshened up a little bit and housekeeping have been, they've made the bed really beautifully again. It's just, I guess, what you expect from a resort, but it's certainly not anything that I've ever come across before. And I suppose this is quite a nice opportunity just to give a very quick whistle stop, a whirlwind tour of the hotel room. So it's a very standard hotel room. You've got some easy chairs, you've got the bed, you come through into the little corridor where you, I suppose, enter into the hotel room. You've got a couple of wardrobes on either side of what looks to be I guess like a vanity unit where I've been able to blow dry my hair and put on things like sunscreen correctly on my face and then behind that is the bathroom so if I turn it around hello and what's quite nice is that you've got down there your toilet and your bidet because naturally you shouldn't be flushing toilet paper down the toilet so bidet is always nice and handy you've got the sink You've then got a bathtub with just a standard shower above it. Um, it feels a little bit dated, this bathroom, but it's very practical. It's got hot water, uh, plenty of pressure. And what's really cool is that if I, <laughs> hello again, if I just close this door, you can then see that it's double doors into the bathroom, which I thought was very over the top when we first arrived. But what I've realised is that when I am blow drying my hair, sat on that stool there, because of the mirror behind in the bathroom, you can see how the back of your hair looks, which is perfect. But now I think we are ready to go for dinner. And then the hotel rooms are on either side here and it's like this little village. And you just walk up the hill to like the main building, which is where like the main reception is and the restaurant is and there's beautiful plants all the way through. Tonight's actually our second night of eating at this buffet. Yesterday when we arrived, I think we got very excited by some of the food that we saw and we just went straight for what looked the best and kind of went with the main course first and then we went for the starter a little bit later on. So we've learned from our mistakes of yesterday. And um, what we've done is we've taken our two hands, we've each got two plates and we've just filled it up with lots and lots of mezzo type things, brought it back to this table. And then the idea is, is that using our little side plates, we're just going to kind of graze on all sorts of different things. So some of it, I can't even tell you what we've got, but we've got some aubergine courgette, which the guy was very confused by because I think he only knows it by the American term of zucchini. I'm not too sure what this one is. It looks like little pieces of beetroot inside of it, though. That looks amazing. Some fresh tomato. And then uh, there was a Greek salad, which is a bit unusual out here, and some kind of fresh vegetables with some broccoli. This plate I'm really excited for. So we've got some hummus, which which I had on the first morning for breakfast and it was 
amazing so much better than any hummus i've ever had at home before and then this one here is i know it's like a made up of like a mushed up aubergine but it's not the same as baba ganoush this is something a little bit different and a little bit unique to jordan and then the guy when i was getting i think it was this stuff on this plate he said to me do you want me to put olive oil on top I was like, oh yes please and then he could see the other one with the dips in my hand and he was like do you want me to put some on that as well? I was like, yes, please. I think you can maybe tell that we didn't quite know how perfectly to dress all of this. And then at the end, we've got some pita bread to be able to help us dip into a lot of the dips that we've got. So I'm very excited. I, this is one of the things that I really, really love about these sorts of buffets in that we can just kind of have a little bit of everything and to try and make this myself at home would just be far too much effort. It is definitely a perk of eating out. For the next dish, I've decided to go with the very traditional chicken zab. It's something that the Bedouin people here have traditionally eaten as a form of celebratory food. So if people have given birth, if people have got married, if people have graduated, this is the sort of meal that they would go for. Traditionally, it's cooked underground, so they would dig a hole in the earth, predominantly the desert. They would light a fire, and over those coals, they would have a pot where they put the chicken, rice, vegetables in there to really slowly cook. So I'm fully expecting that when I put my fork into this chicken, that it's probably just going to fall away. Then on top of that, they put more sand or earth and then blankets on top of that to help keep in the heat and, and get it to cook a little bit more. We've not been able to see that traditional cooking method here and I do question if in a resort hotel they have actually cooked it underground or not. But either which way, I'm really looking forward to trying something that is very, very traditional Jordanian food. <laughs> And then quite possibly the best course, although probably not the most Jordanian, of course, is, is the dessert because the cart's got so many different options on there. And so last night I just said to the guy, I was like, surprise me, just give me a whole load of good things. And he gave me this one, which is definitely like the red velvet cake and the frosting at the back. They've kind of stuck a little white, white bit of chocolate on it tonight. Pull that off, that frosting there. Um, is like, I guess like a cream cheese kind of frosting. And this one this evening was brand new, which looks absolutely delicious. So I picked that one out and then I just said to the guy, I was like, surprise me, give me a third one, I don't mind. And he's giving me what looks to be some kind of chocolate cake again with some really nice looking frosting. I'm not too sure if it might be fudge, I'm not sure but it's just really nice because instead of going to a restaurant where you order off of the menu and it's like you get one thing this is great you get a little bit of everything i forgot how much i really love buffets <laughs> We're nearing the end of our time here at the Moven Pick Resort. I have to say, as someone who doesn't normally stay in resorts, I've actually enjoyed it a lot more than I think I was expecting to. The food at the hotel had been a little bit of a worry for me. I've never quite liked the idea of prepaying as part of a package for something that included food because in my mind, I always just thought that it would probably be quite subpar and then you're trapped, you've already paid for it or alternatively, you lose that money and then you have to go and eat elsewhere but both the breakfasts and the dinners not only had some typical Jordanian food or maybe Jordanian inspired foods but there was also plenty of international dishes too albeit for things where for example breakfasts that would usually come with like sausages and bacon it was tweaked slightly so there was beef bacon and there was chicken sausages but we really enjoyed as well going with the more typical Jordanian foods too the actual beach itself for a Dead Sea beach I think was quite typical. It certainly wasn't a huge swathe of sand where people go to enjoy the beach and you know do things like building sandcastles. I think those who were going to it were going very much to have that Dead Sea floating experience and doing the whole putting mud on their skin and letting it dry out before going in. So it was quite small and it was tiered but that said there were plenty of sun lounges, plenty of mud. They had had fresh water showers so it was really easy to be able to get the salt water off of your eye. I must confess that when I was trying to wash the mud off of my face earlier on today I got quite a bit of the Dead Sea salt water into my eyes and it stung so much so I quickly came out. One of the lifeguards was on hand with a, a hose pipe at the 
exit and uh, you could see I think that my eyes were bright red and I was just like oh my face so all of that's there on hand of course to offset the fact that it's not this huge beach the way in which maybe a typical resort hotel would have a huge one there are so many different swimming pools and one of which has got a sandy beach that goes into it so it almost feels like it's a beach even though it's a fake one the spa coming from Europe was a little bit I suppose of a surprise I'm quite used to spas having a sauna and a steam room just as like standard but they didn't have one in the spa here it was a rather large hydrotherapy pool there was uh, I suppose a slightly more private infinity pool with sun lounges around that and then there was a very very small dipping pool that we quite quickly realized was quite salty definitely not as salty as the Dead Sea but it made it very easy just to float around in there but other than that it was just treatment rooms after those three spaces so I'm pleased that we went to it and experienced it because it was part of our package and it still worked out cheaper taking out that package than doing the hotel and all of the food separately so it's kind of like we got the spa access for free but I'm not too sure if I would have wanted to have paid to uh, paid extra to get access into that spa just because it, I don't know maybe that's the one thing where it's like it's not normally my cup of tea and I still wouldn't have been won over after the experience to, to go back and, and pay full price but everything else about the resort has actually been surprisingly wonderful but that said <laughs> If we were staying again tomorrow night and we needed to do a repeat of today of just lazing around in the resort, I honestly think I would be bored stiff. It's been really nice to have one day of doing this, but tomorrow morning, straight after breakfast, we are jumping in the car. We're going to be driving approximately three hours south because tomorrow we're headed to Petra.